top stories, new Taiwanese ambassador appointed. Senior health official says all expired vaccine doses have been discarded and rumors about no contact tracing debunked. The details on these stories and more after the break. I just can't believe boy. Yo, sweet boy, we really crying for us. Why you see me crying, boy? My man crying. I just see her thinking about that girl. I think she cheating on me, you know? You lie. Boy, for real. A couple of weeks ago, right? She come telling me how I'm too sweet. And and that I just make she belly roll and, and I got her ties rubbing. What is that? No man. But yes. Look, she tell me, right? that we need some time apart. To be honest, I wasn't too concerned about that because you know how the girls and them, they are addicted to me sweetness. But then, I see she the other day and the girl looking so good, looking so fresh and so lean. Boy, you sure she addicted to you? But yes. But wait, wait, wait. Look at here. Come, come, come. Hide, hide, hide. Boy, come hide now. Oh. I can't believe what is that going on, really? Why not to say for yourself? Drink some water, share some love. Tell your body you're sweet enough. Drink some water, share hey, some love. Tell I somebody you're believe, sweet man. enough. Drink hey. some water, share some love. Tell your body you're sweet enough. Drink some water, share some love. Tell somebody, tell somebody, hey. hey. Without limits, happy and free The skin you're in with no apology The one to seize the day Grab an LLB Live, love, be With LLB Live, love, be Live, love, be Be who you know you can be Grab an LLB Live, love, be Angus to a lemon, lime and bitters Live, love, be Trustworthy, secure, reliable, and responsive. These are just some of the words customers use to describe their experience with the Bank of Nevis Limited. And after 35 years of delivering excellent customer service and honoring our corporate social responsibilities in the island of Nevis, we are finally in St. Kitts. Come and experience why we're not just another option. We are the standard Bond Strong. Look at you, no braces, all the internet you can handle. I wasn't so lucky. Invis is not your parents' braces. Invis is predictable, less painful, more comfortable. Invisalign. Visit Dr. Blake's General Dentistry and Orthodontics located on South Independence Square Street for your free Invisalign consultation. Call 466-7622 for your appointments. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Channel 5 Newscast. I'm Carla Berridge. His Excellency Michael Lin has been appointed the new ambassador of the Republic of China Taiwan to St. Kitts and Nevis. According to the Taiwanese Embassy's Facebook page, Ambassador Lin was initially posted to St. Kitts and Nevis as a counselor in February 2018 and has since been devoted to fostering Taiwan St. Kitts and Nevis relations over the past three years. He was notably the key person in organizing the visits of President. Sai and Taiwan's Honor Guard Corps and facilitating the delivery of Taiwan-made police vehicles as well as many other bilateral cooperation projects in infrastructure and social security. The Post said that with his great connections and deep familiarity with the country, Ambassador Lin's leadership is promising for closer bilateral exchanges and fruitful cooperation. Ambassador Lin's appointment comes following the departure of Ambassador Tom Lee on June 27th, following the completion of his three-year term. 
A senior health official has explained that due to the management of healthcare officials, the Federation was able to extract significantly more than the minimum amount of doses expected in procured vaccines. During the July 2nd NEOC COVID-19 press briefing, Medical Chief of Staff at the Joseph N. France General Hospital, Dr. Kamal Wilkinson, explained the distribution and breakdown of how the first batch of the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccines was administered across the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. We got 4,160 vials that were supposed to be used on or before the 30th of June. And we have said here previously that after the 30th of June, we would not be using any from that stock. These 4,160 vials were intended to deliver a minimum of 41,600 doses. It is not unusual for vials to be overfill, sometimes up to 12 to 15 percent. Here in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, we were happy that in using the vials that we were provided, we were able to get more than the minimum amount that was expected. Dr. Wilkinson further stated that out of the 41,600 doses the Federation received, because of the competent management of healthcare professionals, they were able to gain an additional 250 doses. The remaining vials of vaccines at the 17 health centers across the Federation after June 30, 2021, were discarded. Meanwhile, in response to a question related to rumors of family members testing positive and remaining at home without any contact tracing being done, Dr. Wilkinson rejected that notion and provided insight on the functioning of the Ministry of Health's contact tracing process. Once a person tests positive, contact tracing is begun and the immediate contacts which includes the family, those persons would be the first in line. And so there is not a situation that the team would be aware of where a family member would be testing positive and the other family members would not be considered in the contact tracing process. He thanked everyone who came forward in a timely manner and got vaccinated while praising all persons involved in the education and the rollout program. He said this program enabled St. Kitts and Nevis to now be a much safer place through vaccination as the fight against COVID-19 continues. After the break, Skellic Underground Project resumes and Special Victims Unit on Working for You tomorrow. Stay with us. Want to get away? Now you can. Stop standing in long ATM lines to withdraw cash. Use your national debit or black cards to complete a wide variety of transactions at supermarkets, variety stores, gas stations, pharmacies, and more. Shop online at the most popular websites and stores for quality brands using your national debit or black cards. And take back your time to enjoy all the things that you love to do. Remember, instead of waiting in long ATM lines to withdraw cash, use your national bank cards today. National Bank. Always here. Here are your Hotspots Value Mart IGA Value Club Blue Tag Specials from July 1st through 14th. Essential Everyday Apple Juices, just $6.99. IGA Canned Vegetables, $2.99. IGA Peanut Butter, Creamy and Crunchy, $7.99. Almond Grease Milk, $12.99. Essential Everyday Bar and Shredded Cheeses, just $7.99. Wishbone Salad Dressings, just $8.99. And now, our very low weekly value deals. Craft barbecue sauces, $5.99 each. Essential everyday pastas, $2.99. IGA squeezed ketchup, $3.99. Equaline mouthwash, 1.3 to 1.5 liters, just $9.49. Shop smart, shop value mat. Realisto y haga sus compras value mat. 
Your safety and convenience are most important to us at Flow. That's why we provide many ways for you to keep your account connected, which now includes FastPay, the new convenient payment option on our website. No registration required. Or download the MyFlow app to pay anytime from anywhere on your smartphone or tablet. If you wish to pay your bill in person, feel free to visit any of our fully sanitized branches. Flow is committed to helping you stay connected. Let's do this together. Welcome back. Tonight's edition of Leadership Matters with Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris will not be aired. Over the last two days, the Prime Minister has been engaged in a series of discussions as part of the 42nd regular meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean Community, CARICOM. As a result of the extended hours of these high-level meetings and the fact that his presence as Prime Minister is required, he would not be able to host tonight's Leadership Matters. The program is expected to resume next Tuesday, July 13th at its usual time. Work has resumed at the Taylor's Range leg of the St. Kitts Electricity Company Skellix Bayford's underground project where power lines are being relocated underground. Work there had stopped due to the current statutory rules and orders in place. However, according to the general contractor of the project, Nubian Grio, permission was granted by the Commission of Police to resume work. Um, what we did is, because of the lockdown, we asked the Commission of Police for permission to conduct our road repair aspect of the project during the lockdown. Um, we thought it would have been easier for us to conduct all the road repairs during the lockdown where there is less traffic and less obstruction from persons or vehicles. So we asked the Commission of, of Police for permission and he got the obliged. He also gave an update on the progress of the project. 100% of the cable is installed. Um, we have finished all the excavation and all the substation work. We are just waiting on some switch gears to be installed. That hasn't arrived as yet and dealing with the road repairs. So we are about 90% complete. While the project is 90% complete, Grio was unable to provide an estimated time when the project will be fully completed. Officers of the Police Forces Special Victims Unit will be featured on radio and television program Working For You on Wednesday. The special guest will be Detective Sergeant Consi Rogers, head of the SVU, and Constables Ashishia Paul and Toshika Millington in charge of investigations at the SVU. The discussion will focus on the role and function of the SVU, the reporting mechanism for cases of domestic sexual violence and abuse, legislation with respect to such violence and abuse, investigative procedures, and other related matters. Working for You is broadcast live every Wednesday on ZIZ Radio and other participating radio stations at 1.30 p.m. The program is also streamed live on the SKNIS Facebook page and YouTube channel. And finally on the local scene, officers from the St. Kitts and Nevis Fire and Rescue Services continued their sensitization campaign to help persons to develop a fire plan for their homes and businesses. In Tuesday's installment of the series, the officers spoke about design designating someone as the person to extinguish fires. Fire substation officer Rommel Williams said it is important for this individual to have a prior knowledge of how to deal with certain fires. As mentioned, there are certain factors would have to be taken into consideration, like fire size, fire type, and that kind of stuff, which means then that they would have to have prior knowledge of fire types and what type of extinguisher should be used and what type of fire. Mm -hmm. um, so they would have that knowledge, and that is where fire department, we like to play an active part of your plan development because you, you, we would need to incorporate that training mm -hmm. so that when you actually put your plan in place, you already know the different fire types. Mm. He also noted that this individual would also be responsible for determining when to use the fire extinguisher or when to call the firefighters. And um, you would need to know things like um, fire spread. You, you, you should probably should not, you should not attempt to extinguish a fire using a fire extinguisher. Depending on how far it has spread, it would have left the source of origin 
what we teach is that the fire extinguisher is used to extinguish a fire the literal canister is used to extinguish a fire in its incipient stage mm -hmm. that's when the fire just starts when you just catch it before it has fully grown before uh, it has spread and that kind of stuff right but once the fire would have grown and spread left the source of origin mm -hmm. you should call the fire department Fire substation officer Timothy Martin warned that the fire and rescue services do not advocate for persons to try to extinguish large blazes. However, persons can try to put out smaller fires. Coming up in regional news, President Maduro to give COVAX ultimatum to ship vaccines. The details when we come back. Like they do who are shopping at furniture and appliances. See my friend, you look like you buy something from the Ashley Home Store. How you know? Because we get the cash back back coupons, coupons and, and the free, free groceries for a year. Cash back is back at Horsford's Furniture and Appliances and Ashley Furniture. Shop now and get a chance to win free groceries for one year. WhatsApp Agility Exports today at 1-246-417-0477 or email us at info at agilityexports.com to get yours now. And moving now to news on the regional scene, Venezuela's president has accused the international COVAX scheme of failing his country. The scheme is designed to help poorer nations obtain vaccines, but Nicolas Maduro says Venezuela has not received doses that it has paid for. Two months ago, COVAX announced payments made to the system by Venezuela had been blocked by the Swiss bank, UBS, even though the Biden administration said all COVID purchases were exempt from sanctions. Al Jazeera's Teresa Bo reports. Surviving in Venezuela has been a challenge for Maria Gelitza Vergara. She received a kidney transplant 17 years ago, but last year her kidneys began to fail again. And like thousands of other high-risk patients in the country, she's hoping to get her second COVID-19 vaccine dose soon. It's been a week since I was supposed to get my second dose. I have no clue what's going on. I don't know why they didn't do everything right. Why can't they do it right for once? The same thing with transplants. Four years without a transplant. All patients like me are in the hands of God. I need $42 to pay for medications and my pension is $1. And I need to have two jobs. Venezuela is struggling with U.S. sanctions and an economic crisis that is impacting its ability to fight against the disease. The South American nation is part of the COVAX system, which is a collaborative effort designed to help countries like Venezuela get access to vaccines. 
but that's proving to be a challenge. So far, it has only received around 3.5 million doses from China and Russia, and the country is currently testing thousands of doses of vaccines from Cuba. Two months ago, COVAX announced payments made to the system by Venezuela had been blocked by the Swiss bank UBS. Even though the Biden administration said all related COVID purchases were exempted from the sanctions. On Sunday, President Nicolás Maduro said the COVAX system has failed Venezuela. Nosotros le cumplimos. We fulfilled our promises. Two months ago, we gave them all our money by doing magic to liberate funds that were blocked. The government of the United States then unblocked more money for us. And that money is there in an account and the COVAX has failed the people of Venezuela. Either you give us the vaccines or return our money. Earlier this year, Venezuela rejected around 2 million AstraZeneca vaccines from COVAX due to safety concerns. But opposition figures say Venezuela could be accessing vaccines for free. Miguel Pizarro, who is currently on exile, say Nicolás Maduro is to blame. The reasons why we don't have access to free vaccines, like countries like Syria, Sudan or Yemen, countries that have humanitarian emergencies that are acknowledged by the United Nations, the reason is the obscurity of statistics, of numbers, in front of the World Bank are numbers that show when Venezuela enjoyed an oil bonanza, and that's not the case anymore. As politicians bicker over who is to blame for the hardships in the country, millions of Venezuelans are impatiently waiting for an opportunity to get the vaccine. People like Maria Geritza Vergara, struggling with a life-threatening disease, says it's her only chance of surviving COVID-19. Teresa Bo, Al Jazeera. President Jair Bolsonaro was involved in a scheme to skim salaries of his aides while a federal deputy. Website UOL reported on Monday, citing what it said were audios of his former sister-in-law explaining his role in the alleged racket. The pressure is piling on Jair Bolsonaro. The Brazilian president took office in January 2019, vowing to free the country from the yoke of corruption. Now he's been accused of embezzlement. The allegations were made by leading Brazilian news website UOL, which published a series of reports and recordings accusing the far-right leader of presiding over a scheme in which he took a cut of his staff's wages during his time as a lawmaker in the lower house of Congress between 1991 and 2018. State prosecutors have also pressed charges against Bolsonaro's eldest son over his alleged participation in a similar racket scheme when he was a lawmaker. The revelations have been rejected by Bolsonaro's lawyer as being based on untruthful and non-existent facts. But they have already sparked renewed calls for the 66-year-old's impeachment, who is facing mounting public anger over his response to the coronavirus crisis, which has so far killed 525,000 Brazilians. Huge crowds of protesters took to the streets in cities across the country last weekend to call for his removal following allegations that members of his government had sought to illegally profit from the purchase of COVID vaccines. A parliamentary inquiry into Bolsonaro's handling of COVID-19 is currently underway. He has denied any wrongdoing. He's seen a steep decline in his popularity since the beginning of the pandemic, with polls suggesting former leftist president Luis Inácio Lula da Silva would beat him in next year's presidential election. Coming up, England to be restriction-free in a few weeks. We'll tell you more when we come back. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. Welcome back. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is pushing ahead with a plan to drop all COVID restrictions in two weeks' time, despite a prediction that there will be 50,000 cases a day by then. ABC Australia's Europe correspondent Samantha Hawley reports. At St Paul's Cathedral, it was a very COVID-safe affair. 
to mark the National Health Service's 73rd birthday. Prince William was there, a Cambridge is isolating after coming into contact with someone with the virus. She was last seen at Wimbledon. The tennis is a test event, but soon all doors will be open if Boris Johnson has his way, with all restrictions to be gone by July the 19th. I want to stress from the outset that this pandemic is far from over. It certainly won't be over by the 19th. It's not over, but it's time for a new message of personal responsibility. That means no laws mandating mask wearing or social distancing. No restrictions on pub or theatre numbers. It'll be just like the old days before COVID hit. We have to live with this virus and we have to get on with it. People are, are chomping at the bit now to get out and about and um, to be able to socialise a little bit more. I'm very, very much looking forward to it, I can assure you. Um, I think it's just dragged, dragged on too long. The infection rate will continue to increase. In the past week, there have been around 30,000 new cases a day across the UK. But hospitalisations and the death toll remain low often in single figures. If we can't reopen our society in the next few weeks, when we will be helped by the arrival of summer, then when will we be able to return to normal? When the masks come off and life returns to normal, the infection rate will spike, and Boris Johnson is expecting that. But it's the unexpected that will cause him a problem, because he's all but promised that once the restrictions are lifted, they'll be lifted for good and never return. We don't know where the virus is going to go next. Say a new variant comes that's highly infected, that breaks through the vaccinated population, then we'd be in trouble and start swamping the healthcare system. When the restrictions go, England will be a test case for the world. Boris Johnson will be hoping it's a gamble that pays off. Samantha Hawley, ABC News, London. A day of family fun at an Iowa theme park turned tragic over the weekend when a river raft overturned on a water ride, killing an 11-year-old boy and injuring three others. NBC's Miguel Almanga reports. A fun Saturday at an Iowa theme park turning into a family's worst nightmare when a raft on Adventureland's raging river ride like this one overturned, plunging its six passengers into the rushing waters below, injuring three and killing 11-year-old Michael Jaramillo. Four off-duty Altoona police officers and two fire medics working at the park racing to the scene. It was very challenging uh, with, with the ride's location in the park. It was, it was remote from the entrance that we needed to use. The ride passing an inspection the day before. Iowa regulators finding it in good working order. An attorney for Adventureland telling NBC News the theme park is a well-run and maintained facility, adding safety is the number one priority at Adventureland. The Raging River ride has been in operation for nearly four decades. It is a safe ride. Raging River remains closed during the investigation. My heart just stopped. I mean, it was just like... <sighs> It was just like having to relive the whole thing again. For Gladys Boer, the news was all too familiar. This latest deadly accident is not the ride's first. In 2016, her husband Steve was less than a week on the job when he fell on the moving conveyor belt, becoming wedged between a raft and a concrete sidewall. After waiting for help to arrive, he later died at a hospital from trauma to the skull and brain. It's not just money buying tickets it's people who are trusting you with their family and their kids and their lives and if they don't make it a safe environment in a safe place then something needs to change one of the riders a minor is still in critical condition just a heartbreaking situation no word yet from the iowa occupational safety and health administration on if any safety violations will be issued to the park Coming in sports, Africa's fastest man targets 100 meter gold in Tokyo. Stay with us. Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. 
National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. We know there are moments when life just doesn't go as planned and our days pretty much takes us where it wants to. But for every missed occasion, there's a great opportunity. We are making it easier to make bill payments, report faults and receive bill balances through our automated call-in service available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Simply call 465-2000 and say or press 2 to access our automated customer service system. Say or press 2 to make a payment via credit card. Enter your 8-digit Skillic account number as seen on your bill. Enter the amount you wish to pay without a decimal point. For example, enter 2000 for a $20 payment. Have your credit card on hand to enter your credit card number, expiration date and security number. One phone call gives you the power to regain control of your day. Skillex Interactive Voice Response System. Skillex. Powering Responses. Welcome back. All eyes will be on the 100 meters event at the Olympic Games in Tokyo. South Africa's Akane Simbani is on a mission to bring back the coveted sprint gold to Africa. Since his Olympics debut at Rio 2016, Simbani has grown to be a force to be reckoned with. More in this report. Akani Simbine goes into his second Olympic Games supremely confident in his abilities and his preparations as he goes in search of the crown jewel in athletics, the 100-meter title and the bragging rights that go along with winning the much-anticipated event. It's been probably the toughest with athletics, you know, there's been injuries and everything like in the past, but this has been really tough because, you know, we work for Olympics every four years, you know, we work towards it, we make sure that we are ready every four years and now it was taken away from us we have to start again for a new season and there was a point where they said there might not be olympics again so it was literally up and down but you have to just keep on going you know keep on pushing and just making sure that you are better every year better every time you get to step on the track the 27 year old continental 100 meter champion admits that it will be strange without the thousands of fans who pack the stands for the showcase event to see who can be the fastest man in the world yeah, yeah, it's very difficult, you know, um, because we feed off the fans. We feed off the atmosphere that the fans give us, you know, and without them, there's no atmosphere. It's just a dead stadium with just the athletes, and there's something missing, you know, for us. The 2018 Commonwealth Games gold medalist feels that despite the disruptions of the pandemic and the excitement around his red-hot form last year, that he has emerged from the uncertainty as a stronger athlete. Um, it's, it's, it's really nice to know that the Olympics are happening, you know, and we're actually working towards a goal. And for me, it was, I was at a point where training was really going well, I was competing really well, and I felt really good about where I was at. And now I'm twice as more confident than I was last year, you know. Um, I've been working as hard as I can to make sure that I'm better, to make sure that I'm faster, and then I get to Olympics a faster and stronger athlete. Africa's fastest man has been consistently improving since his fifth place finish in Rio four years ago. Consistently getting faster, consistently running sub 10 seconds and consistently making the rest of his competition take notice. Simbine knows to realize his dream and show his true potential, he'll have to put together the perfect race to officially claim the title as the world's fastest man. CS2 plus C, CGTN, Johannesburg, South Africa. And that's it for sports. When we come back, we'll have another look at the stories that made the headlines. Whether you're at home or abroad, ZNIZ's social media platforms help you stay connected with what's going on in St. Kitts and Nevis. Keep up with daily events by liking our Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter at ZBC Online. Like our pictures on Instagram and subscribe to our videos on YouTube. Also, you can watch us live on the ZIZ mobile app and our website, ZIZonline.com. No matter where you are, ZIZ is just a click away. ZIZ Broadcasting Corporation, reaching you wherever you are.
And we're wrapping up with a recap of the top stories. A new Taiwanese ambassador appointed. Senior health official says all expired vaccine doses have been discarded. And rumors about no contact tracing debunked. And that's the end of the ZIZ Channel 5 Newscast. Thanks for joining us. I'm Calaverage. Goodbye.